So at one time, the Earhart Estate, if that's what you want to mm -hmm. call it, included how many acres would you estimate? No, 200 or so. It didn't go over to Dixborough Road. His, eventually his west line was our east line that goes right up over here uh, north. Mm -hmm. Kind of the thrust of this thing I was going to write mm -hmm. was on when they moved the house. My, we had bought, my father had bought this piece of property and Jim Kennedy had bought the piece across the road. And we were building a little, my father and I were building a little cabin down by the river. Over there. And Mr. Earhart came over. Uh, and it was a sunny afternoon because he just had a regular riding clothes on with a groom. And they rode over and he came. And we, we came out of the cabin to talk to him. And he said, uh, Lauren, it bothers my blood. My architects tell me the only thing we can use from the old house is the chandelier and the wall sconces that we had made that are in the, made in Italy that are in the den. Because he was anticipating building a new house? Well, they were building a new house. Oh, they yeah. were building a new yeah. house. Yeah, see, Smith, Henchman, and Grills designed the house. They're a big architectural firm, commercial architectural firm in Detroit. And Bryant and Detweiler were building the house. Okay. And this, and the house they were building is the one that's up there yeah. now, right? Yeah. Time for you, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. It was in back of the, this present the farmhouse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This right. the road. Okay. Yeah. And um, about his And then he said, "Do you want the house?" <laughs> and at the time, I mean, my father had an architect that was working on plans for a house right over there. And it's the same architect, or it's the son of the architect, that did that church that's down at the corner of uh, State and Huron. Oh, that stone oh, church. Oh, yeah. That yeah, was okay. Alec Donaldson was the man's okay. name. And his, his uh, well, the old guy's granddaughter lives in town here. Miss Weber, she lives over in Lafayette. But anyhow. Uh, did you think he was serious when he said that? Or? Oh, he didn't fool. <laughs> oh no, he <laughs> he was yeah. always serious. Very well, yeah. He he could joke a little, but he yeah. never joked about a thing like that. Yeah. And uh, my father said, uh, "I'd like to think about it." And Uncle Hal said, "Fine, let me know Monday morning." This is Saturday noon, just before lunch. So then Uncle Hal and the groom they got back on their horses and they rode away. And Pop said, "Hide the tools." And we hid the tools under the cabin, and we went roaring into Detroit. And at that time, they were uh, widening Woodward Avenue. And at the corner of Woodward and Adams, uh, which is right by Grand Circus Park, there was a big church steeple that they were m moving back to the west, east. And Pop got a hold of that man. His name was, was Mr. Johnson, and I'd forgotten the name of the moving company, but he's a Swede. And they came out here on Sunday with instruments that my father brought along, and they measured and everything, and uh, figured, and time and everything else. And uh, they had, so that night my father had the price, it was $10,000. <laughs> and so Monday when he went to work, after not sleeping very much, I guess, <laughs> well, hell, when you have an architect, you know, and you have your plans, they weren't in the working drawings, they were still in the conceptual yeah. stage, but, uh, and Mr. Donaldson was a peach of a guy. But they decided to take the house. And uh, So the offer was, there's the house if you want it. We'll get it off the property. Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't like the idea of demolishing it, I ain't gonna blame him. It's a hell of a good house. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, the, the first floor on the front part is all solid stone, about the walls are close to two feet thick. And the, uh, there are three big chimneys on it. And, uh, how old was the How old was the house? I don't know. No way I could probably estimate that. Well, it's well, probably back in the 1890 along mm -hmm. here. Uh, well, that was a major. Wasn't that a major undertaking? Uh, I mean, I know it would be today. I'm assuming 50 years ago it was. It was interesting. You no, know, those guys knew how to do it. I mean, they moved church churches, and uh, mm -hmm. I was telling you. Once, though, it wasn't a question. Oh no, it didn't take. No, they don't put it on a truck and haul it around. Uh, they're saying they're, they're, the walls are thick. There are three big uh, chimneys on it. It's got a slate roof. 
But what they did, is this what you want to hear about yeah. how to move it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, they punched holes in the basement walls under, uh, underneath the uh, joists, and they put uh, girders or, or steel beams in underneath, uh, oh, say on eight foot centers or something, uh, going this way, uh, say east-west, and then they punch below that, say going north-south, and they put in maybe three or four bigger beams that picked up all of these sub beams. Mm -hmm. And then in the ba then they built cribbing down in the basement, and they had these Swedes. And they, uh, do you know what a screw jack is? It's it's a Raises an incli inclined plane, helical inclined oh. plane with a ball on the top. And down below you have a plate which fits into another receptacle that would go out like this, uh, horizontally. And then in the ball, it seems to me, or just below the ball, were two holes that went through the uh, base there at, at 90 degrees. So you could put a pipe in there and turn on the pipe. And there's tremendous leverage on those inclined mm -hmm. planes. And oh, they may have had 18 or 20 of those cribbings under the, in the basement. And all these guys got down there chewing their snuff and <laughs> pulling on this thing. And they just picked the house right up off of the foundation. Without cutting or anything, they just lifted it off at that point. Amazing. Yeah, and then they, uh, they put a bridle on it which is just a, a cable that's hitched to maybe three or four places. And they pulled the house off of the foundations to the north. Out, there was a turnaround area, or a circular guy. Then they rotated it 90 degrees so that, say, these three big beams that had picked up all of the other subs uh, above beams were running east-west. And they started across the fields. And they would build cribbing, which are, uh, oh, they were uh, a six by six uh, lumber, about four feet long. And uh, they would build these log cabins up underneath. Uh, and then the log cabins would hold the rails. Mm -hmm. And then there were big, about two inch steel rollers that they rolled this thing on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so how many yards did they have to take that? That's a half a mile. Almost half a mile. Yeah. And it, it doesn't move very fast. Do you know how far from the air it was, John? It well, I will. Uh, so they started out, and it, they brought it level, clear across. The, I mean, they didn't change the elevation. Well, no. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to do that. No, one. because you break it. You yeah. break the walls. Yeah. So they had to hold it level, and they brought it all across the fields. But they, they had this bridle. They, they moved it out in the front, uh, turn around turned it 90 degrees, and they brought it clear across the fields. And they had an old truck with a winch, which is like a, a squashed in cylinder at the middle. Mm -hmm. And they take about six or seven ramps with the cable that came from the bridle, and the guy just go like this. And that truck was uh, just blocked out there in the field. And so that's how they moved that house. And at the one point they where the they came across the Edison line, there's a gully the other side of where it is now. And the Edison dropped the line on a Sunday in there and they had the house up eight the bottom of the house was up eighteen feet in the air. Uh, and I think the Ann Arbor News has a picture of that. If I'd you, love to get my hands on it. Well, I think X Stanger uh, was the photographer, photographer then. Yeah, it's well, let me e pursue that. E C K Stanger. You guys yourselves don't have any pictures, do you? No. Uh, That's a shame, isn't it? You know, we moved in on in, in June or July. Yeah. 